got it again. There's not much time left to do. Und in 10 Minuten geht es los mit dem Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Saz Face Switzerland. My name is Liam Lonsdale and we are live for the first men's lead semi-finals of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. 18 men qualified yesterday, but only eight will advance to the finals later today. Before the action gets underway, let's take a look at the highlights from yesterday's speed action. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sazfe, Switzerland.
So that was the action from Speed yesterday. Amazing, amazing finals with some brilliant efforts from the Russians and three Russians on top of both podiums. But let's have a look at the qualifiers from yesterday's lead results. So those are the guys that qualified yesterday. Top eight there, Hyung Sub Lim, Sam Klavien, Jung Yon Lee, Nikolai Primorov, Kusovlev, Dengin, Russians there in that top six. Kevin Huser and Lucas Gertz, Swiss guys on the top of the rankings. Also qualifying in his group was Pauli Salmin and nine guys from each group qualify. One omission there, Luna Ladovon. Very disappointed to, to see him missing out on qualifiers after having such a strong preseason, but expect big things from him as the competition season progresses, especially next week in Rabenstein. This is the bottom end of that group. A couple of British athletes were here as well, which is great to see. Joe Saunders qualify, uh, not qualifying rather, but placing in 16th, joint 16th place there in his group. Carter Stritch of the USA there in 19th. And in group two, of course there were two qualifying groups, you can see there, Mohamed Reza Safdarian, what a day he had. He finished first in the speed qualifiers and first in his qualifying group. Maxim Tomilov, no surprises to see him there. Alexei Tomilov, the brothers together in second joint second position. Dmitry Grabenikov, someone we saw last season looking very strong indeed in his first International World Cups. Excellent to see him there. And then, of course, the bottom qualifier just sneaking in there, but awesome work from Masoud Zainali, who looked really strong and just fell to a, due to a slip low, uh, low on the route. Going down the rankings, there's another British athlete, of course, Tom Ballard, who looked incredibly strong, but just climbed too slowly. Um, be interesting to see how he does for the rest of the competition. Jan Hansen there in 18th place. He joined me this morning in the commentary box. Will Woodhead, another Brit. Jonathan Brown of Switzerland, all with fairly low falls. Disappointing performances for those guys. Hope they'll be all be looking to do better next week. So let's take a look. Oh, well, ah, and there, God MacArthur. That was such a shame to see him disqualified due to a missed sized axe. There is a, a restriction on the size of axe that you can use. Gordon's axe, sadly, was not meeting those restrictions and therefore he was disqualified. He'll look to get that sorted next week for Rabenstein. Let's have a look at the overall qualifying list. So this is the top 18 guys who all made it through. So coming out first will be Pauli Salminen, followed by Masoud Zainali, Hyung Sub Lim, Andreas Gantner of Liechtenstein, Sam Klavien, Jung Hyun Lee, Nikolai Primorov, Dmitry Grabenikov, making the first eight. And then the second eight, Tristan Ladovan, big brother of Luna, more favored in speed, but managed to qualify yesterday. Alexei Marshall off the young Russian, great to see him in there. Kuzovlev, who won the speed. Yunkie Kwan, Alexei Dengin, last year's winner from Durango. Maxim Tomilov, Kevin Huser, and Alexei Tomilov making up the upper part of that table. And then, of course, the final two will be Lucas Gutz, the 18 year old Switzerland climber, and of course, Mohamed Reza Safdarian ever ran out last. Joining me this afternoon is Kendra Stritch of the USA. Uh, she's going to be with me for the entire lead semi finals. Hey, Kendra. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm great. How about yourself? I am absolutely banging. That's Lancastrian for good. Uh, <laughs> um, what did you make of the semi-finals this morning? Oh, it was great to see the new start uh, on the structure. We've yep. made some changes after many years. Uh, so it was neat to see the new start. The women climbed really well. Even even with a, um, a few surprising slips and the Z-clip also. Two Z-clips, in fact. Annie Bertling and um, Masha Edler both Z-clipped, but Annie timed out at the point that she'd done it, and then gotcha. Masha obviously got penalized for that one. Yeah. So here's Pauli Salmanen, Finnish climber. Great to see him up there in the qualifying position. His wife qualified and was in semi-finals earlier, just missed out on finals placing. She finished joint ninth with Mira Alhonso. Pauli's 36 years old. He finished 37th overall last year with a 17th place in Durango. Yeah, and last year was their first season coming, Team Finland, and uh, they are all are very strong climbers and doing amazing. And they train super hard, eh? They do, and they have a structure now, so they've been setting World Cup style and getting um, all of their fellow Finnish climbers excited about this style of climbing. Super cool, and I'm excited to see how that evolves. 
over the next few weeks and of course over the next few seasons. So Pauli just emerging out of that first little roof at the start of the route. See what he makes of this, of course. It's the first time that Kendra or I have seen the roots climbed. We've seen the holes on the wall, but we haven't seen how it goes. Oh no! That's wow. a low fall. Disappointing for Pauli Salminen. What a shame. Sure. A little pop there of the pick. The athletes are seeing, most of the athletes are seeing these holds, these specific holds for the first time in this competition. Um, a few have seen them in some previous competitions, but we've definitely seen quite a bit of misreading of holds and mm -hmm. um, just not being sure how to take them. It slowed down the women. Yeah, is that due to the nature of the holds and the fact that they're natural rock or? Well, it's both the, the natural rock is very unique, but it's also because um, we, we, they're new designs, and so we can't just read them from the ground, and that um, makes it much harder, much slower. You want to be cautious because <laughs> you don't want to pop off like we just saw Pauli. And he just shifted his way. Ah, you saw it just twist on the hold there, left to right. What a shame. Nightmare for Pauli Salmonen. So that's our first victim of the route setting here in Saz Faye. Next climber out will be Masood Zainali of Iran. Let's have a look at his stats. So Masood is 34 years old. He finished 29th in lead overall last year. He's certainly better known for his speed climbing, but he finished 27th in lead in Beijing, 19th in Cheongsong, just missing out on semi-finals, and then 23rd in Ravenstein. So he's already bettered all of last year's results just by qualifying today. Yeah, I'm sure he's very excited. He's worked hard. He's been training a lot with the Russian team. And um, so it's paying off. I mean, it was incredible to see Zenab Musave yesterday in qualifiers. She looked phenomenal. I don't know if you saw her. I did. Yeah, very strong, very confident. Yeah, completely different to the last two years that she's been competing. And then, of course, this year, phew, just wild. And then, in th and then of course, today uh, in semifinals, Super strong. Yep. Qualified in joint first place, I think. Oh no, no. Tolican joint third place, second place. Her and Petra tied. <laughs> <laughs> we just take another sip of this coffee here. <laughs> so there you can see some of our judging staff. Those guys are responsible for making sure that everything is done according to the UIAA rule book and everything's above board. You know, this venue is really awesome for spectators because they can walk up the spiral. Um, parkade mm -hmm. as you can see but it's actually quite hard as a judge mm. because of all the different panels and the ability for the athletes to or, and the ice barrels like you know we can get our leg behind that ice barrel and it's completely legal mm -hmm. but you can't get it behind the structure and touch the back of the structure and it's hard standing on the ground for those judges to see everything as a look at the judges score sheet shows you how they score each individual hold yeah, it's a good point, that, Kendra. And also, here's a question. Um, you know, it's amazing for spectators because you can get so high up on the route. How is it as a climber having spectators sometimes just a couple of feet away from your face, hands, crampons? Is it distracting at all? Or? I think for most climbers, once we're on the route, we're not noticing that. Mm -hmm. But I do know that there's a few climbers that are more easily distracted, yeah. um, that that can throw them out of their element when they're climbing. But and this is on like every meter. Yes. Here. Yeah. You, the whole way up, you can have a spectator right next to you. It's so. amazing. Yeah, great for them. Possibly great for the athletes. Possibly not. And possibly not great for the spectators if they get an axe to the face. You know, I don't know that that's ever happened. No, I don't think it has either. Although a couple of years ago, I was taking some photos and qualies, and someone fell off. And was about three inches away from my camera and my face with their crampons as they like swung in. It was definitely sharpened the mind. Yes, <laughs> the photographers have to be aware. But that's another benefit of this is that as, as athletes, we get great photos from here because the photographers can get in mm -hmm. real close without having to be roped up and yeah. everything. Yeah, it's true. And especially when you've got great photographers around. Absolutely. <laughs> except when they're stuck in commentary. Oh, here we go, here we go. <laughs> okay, I'll buy you that beer. <laughs> How about just some photos? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what the delay is. 
perhaps our climber wasn't ready, Masood Zainali, or perhaps Powley called a technical. Um, we don't have that information just yet. Doesn't seem to be much kerfuffle going on. No. There he's coming There's out. There's Masood. Uh, maybe he just wasn't quite ready because it was such a quick attempt. I think that's probably the case. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, guys at home. If you are tuned in at home, then let us know where you're tuning in from. Drop us a comment in the comments box. Drop us a message. You can contact me directly on Instagram. Use the tag at Liam Lonsdale. I have just loaded up the live chat here so we can see what you guys are saying. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. If you have questions for Kendra, get them in. Let's get, let's get it going. Let's get it going here. Right, here we go. Here's the chat. Three comments. Right, we're going we're gonna to get that way up. Let's see those comments. Where are you tuning in from? Phil Powell's involved. Hey, Phil, how's it going? There's Masood Zainali. Little echo there. So there he is. In really great shape this season. If you don't believe me, have a look at his Instagram. He's happy to share, <laughs> to share his shape. And there he goes, seven minutes on the clock for Masood Zainali. So I've been noticing that uh, some of the athletes have had a hard time getting their crampons out of the new plywood at mm -hmm. the bottoms of these walls. I think some of the competitors with the super sharp... Um, cramp on front points uh, with this new wood, especially that those vertical slats mm -hmm. that you're seeing right to the right of Masood. And that just uh, wastes some energy for those athletes. Mm -hmm. And time, I guess, as well. Correct, yeah. So Masood just trying to work out what this move is. This is, of course, where we saw Powley just dropping a few moments ago. He's going to try to skip that hold there. Nice. Strong. So we'll see if Masood can stay quiet enough on that hook. Really good core tension. Just checking out that hold with his left hand. Oh. Heckers. Nice, Masood. Really good composure there. Mm -hmm. Just using that right hand to help himself up. Not expending so much force through that very shaky placement puts in the fig four to keep that stability get a little bit of extra height off the hold without it popping awesome well he tackled that like a pro he did that was impressive although he knows he's tangled up less pro <laughs> nice one <laughs> but you see oh no oh man oh mate masood Oh, heartbreak. He looked so good then. Did those those holds, it, you know, they're granite, like we said earlier. Oh. They're really slippy. This is not a good start to a semifinals here. Well, the here. fact that I'm speechless is a bad start, isn't it? <laughs> no. Oh, Masood, my heart breaks for him. He just looks Man, he so just... good there. Yeah, that's really sad, but that is the way these things can go. Yeah, that's what competition is. I mean, it's one of the things that I love about competition is that you, you, now is the time. This is the route. You just have to go out there and deal with what you find. Yeah. And try your best, and it can be heartbreaking, and it's amazing all the time. No, no prisoners, eh? No prisoners. Oh, I can't believe that. Gutted for it. Okay, appearing on your screens in a few moments will be Korean athlete Hyung Sub Lim. Only 19 years old. Oh. As the route setter now, do you think that those guys will be nervous or do you think they'll just be like, okay, like getting through the ranks? What, what's going through the route setter's mind at this point, do you think? The, well, the route setters. I mean, I think we've still got 16 more. Um, men to come mm -hmm. out so you know we do start this with the people that qualified in the lowest position mm -hmm. theoretically everybody is getting better and more experienced as mm -hmm. we 
as they come out. So the route setter is hoping that this next person gets through <laughs> yeah, <but it laughs> these is. moves yeah. and gets higher on the route. So there's Young Sub Lim. And they are actually new route setters this year. New route setters, new, new holds. New um, climbing structure. The new only thing that stays yeah. the same is the people and the car park. <laughs> Yeah, and the beautiful scenery outside. Oh, it's so good. And it's been snowing so much the last few days, like, totally ridiculous. Didn't stop snowing for about three days straight, and now there's a good meter and a half, two meters of snow laid down in some places around. Easily, yeah. It's so good. It's a winter wonderland in South Fay. So there is 19-year-old Hyung Sub Lim. Tall, very tall young lad. Uh, I'd say he's probably in the region of six foot one, which is about 183 centimeters, I think. Here he goes. And there's that hashtag on the screen if you do want to get in touch with us. That's the one to use. It was interesting to see how Masood Zainali didn't strike his axe into the top of the wood like Hyung Sub did. He just hooked it over the back of the wood. Good experience there. Bit of knowledge. Hyung Sub Lim finished 28th overall last year. Only competed in Cheong Song, where he finished 12th. Made semi finals there. I'm sure that performance earned him a place on these competitions this year. Well deserved, great potential. It's great to see young blood in the male Korean team because obviously Hyung Park's been the the man for so long now. It's great to see someone that could possibly follow in his footsteps and see some success. Yeah, one of the reasons we don't see as many young Koreans is because their education system and their societal expectations are so, are so rigorous mm -hmm. that uh, the young athletes don't have a ton of time to do their studies and train mm -hmm. for World Cups. So uh, we see the athletes when they get older coming to the World Cups from Korea. And Hyung Sub Lim having some trouble with that hold as well. It's definitely a problem cause of this one. You can see the back of the head of the axe just shaking around under the weight. Really tricky placement. Is he going to throw that fig four in? Hopefully we're not going to see another victim here. Come on, Chunk Sub. Oh, I can't breathe. Go on. And nice, and he places the hook there which is often a technique favoured by the Koreans, as we saw in the women's. And there he is, moves off that well. Oh, okay. So now can he get up, get that clip, get to the next hole? I hope so. <laughs> We're in. One We're going. step further. <laughs> Four minutes 30. He's been on there for two and a half minutes. That's crazy. He's only just made the first clip. He's been climbing for two and a half minutes. It's so delicate, so insecure. Very, very technical movement indeed. Uh, he really does not like this hold either. Don't blame him. Look at it. It's awful. Go on, mate. No. Close. Nice, there we go. So he makes the move. Now hopefully we're going to see him pick up the pace because he's got a long way to go with very little time. Especially in all these new to the climber, these holds that are new to the climbers that you keep them seeing them put their hands on those holds. They're trying to find if there's a good spot. You don't, you get feedback through your tool, but not the same as being able to reach up and feel that hold with your fingers. Mm -hmm. Oof, well held there at the fourth clip by Hyung Sub Lim. 
you are just joining us, you're watching the first men's semi-final of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. Hyung Sub Lim, 19-year-old Korean, is on the move. Looking so, at, go on, Kendra, sorry. I was going to say, through this corner now, we've consistently seen the routes. They're keeping them low to the bottom of the corner, mm -hmm. which makes it hard for your feet. Yeah. And we did see several athletes disqualified yesterday, in both the men and women, because they um, inadvertently got a foot behind the structure there mm -hmm. as they were moving through. Crafty route setting. Yep. Checking how much attention they're paying, how switched on these guys are. At the moment, Hyung Sub Lim is doing a sterling job. Question is, has he done enough, or will he do enough, to see him through to the finals later? Yeah. Come on, dude! Oh no! He's oh, got to recover that axe. Lucky so he's far. He's got to recover that axe. Oh, it's swinging! He has to catch it. Look at him swinging the ice barrel! Have you ever seen anything like that, Kendra? <laughs> yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Young Sublim, you absolute Bobby Dazzler. That was incredible. So just to give you guys some context at home, if you drop your axe, you're out. You are. That's the end of your attempt. So the fact that the axe didn't fall was very lucky. And the fact that he could swing and catch it, that's the highlight of the competition so far for me. That was so inventive to get the momentum going on the swing. Brilliant work there from the young Korean. One minute, 25 seconds of the clock. Yeah, hopefully he can move on to the log fairly quickly here. This can be a, a really physically taxing and awkward move to move from this swinging ice ballard. And these ice um, barrels seem to have caused a lot of people a lot of problems yesterday. Certainly in the women's comp, it was a massive thing. It was. What is it about these barrels? I mean, they're much bigger than ones that are at other comps. Are they, what, what's going on there? Well, they, one thing they've done is they actually changed how they secure them. Mm -hmm. And they move more this year than okay. they have in past years. And um, also, just the length of them, they're not long enough for people to get both Oh, and just couldn't hold on any longer. But you, they're not tall enough to get your tools and your feet on them, mm -hmm. especially if you're 6'1". Mm -hmm. um, some of the smaller women can do that, but they're still pretty scrunched up on them. So. Yeah. What was interesting yesterday is that Wunshan Shin applied a knee. She did. Great. I love a technical knee. Um, Mariam Filipova like, was in one of the weirdest positions I've ever seen. She had both of her crampons in the base of it and then was like squatted yeah <laughs> like fully locked it was so impressive to watch um how some of those competitors tackled those barrels right let's take a look at hyung sub lim again in replay so this was that first section it took him two and a half minutes to just get past those first few holds just to make a clip um it'll be interesting to see how the higher ranking climbers manage with that but he did get past it eventually and that look at that hole that is awful just a pebble from the river terrible and he did get past it and he moved through that corner and this was the moment that we thought he may have really scuppered himself but watch this in a fig four position using his other foot to get the swing going so good round of applause for that man so impressive fun to watch but that did cost him energy, energy and grip and strength, right? Yeah, like we, sure. we saw him just fail on his grip strength and, and those arms in the end. And if he hadn't had to swing, he may have been up on the log before his hands failed on him. But, but great composure. Yes. Impressive. You know, he didn't even lose a beat. He just started swinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. was no like... Stop. Yeah. Well, that was super cool. Okay, bib number 89 is Andreas Gantner of Liechtenstein. Great to see uh, an athlete from Liechtenstein here. And of course we had the World Youth Championships in Liechtenstein, I want to say a few weeks ago? Two weeks ago, Excellent, yeah. good. My concept of time is definitely a little bit messed up at the moment. So, that was, were you at that event? No, oh, I okay. unfortunately didn't make it this year to the World the Youth Championship, but it's always a great event. Yeah. And Liechtenstein's um, structure is only a couple years old, but they've been training hard. And um, I don't know. I was going to look up 
I don't think we've ever had a Liechtenstein athlete in a final. No, we definitely haven't. I'm not sure we've had one in a semifinal yet. I'm 99% sure we haven't. So this, he would be the first one from Making Liechtenstein, history. yeah. It's awesome. And he was in speed finals as well yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's great to see these new athletes coming through. That's one thing um, I was talking about with a few people yesterday, some spectators, we were just talking about the comp in general. People who are fans of the circuit, follow the circuit, and they said they were just so impressed to see so many new names on that starting list, you know. Yes. Yes, all the regulars are there, like yourself, you know, like God McCarthy, Hannah Ray Song, etc., etc. But there's so many new names, and those names are filtering through to semifinals. So, so really did you cool. just see how confidently he moved through those holds? It was ridiculous. I mean, look how fast. <laughs> he's a whole minute and seven seconds faster than Hyung Sub Lim. You know, he's just taking those holds. Look at that. So confident. gantner has got skills. I'm into this. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. Okay. The game is on. Look at that. He's now a minute and 42 seconds ahead of Hyung Sub Lim. And I'm assuming that he's not going to do any axe dropping. I'm just going to keep him even for... Oh, no! He didn't drop the axe, but he dropped the hold. Oh, oh. What is going on? Kendra! These holds are highly, highly technical. They're slippy. You know, I can't see the... There's several of those holds that do not have a drilled spot on them. So you're, re, you're relying on the grain structure of the granite. The porosity. To keep your tool on there. This is brutal. This is brutal watching. They're, oh, I mean, what a shame for Andreas Gantner, who looked so good then. He did. You can see the disappointment, the anger. Oh, buddy. So good. What a shame. But he great has potential. a great attitude, though. You saw that smile. He's like, ugh. But you, just, you do have to, to make yourself smile after these upsets. Well, you either laugh or cry, I guess. <laughs> Or both. Or both. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to see him in Rabenstein next week because I feel like he's going to be one to watch. Ah, oh, that right hand. It was a oh. heartbreaker. <sighs> On the hold that we thought was like the, the best good hold. One. <laughs> 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 oh, we are getting it all wrong this morning. Uh, big shout out to Alex Rushaw who's just tuned in. Great to have you on board. There are the provisional rankings so far. Four guys three of which all had very disappointing low falls. Disappointing for them, disappointing for us. We all want to see them getting some good distance. Hyung Sub Lim leading the pack at the moment with that excellent recovery of his axe and a very composed attempt at that first route. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Saz Fate. My name's Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined this afternoon by Kendra Stritch of the USA. You're watching the lead men's semi-finals, the first of the season here in South Bay. And it's turning out to be pretty exciting so far. Not really for the right reasons. No. <laughs> but still, exciting nonetheless. Next up on the wall is Sam Clavien of Switzerland. Expect some noise from the crowd that has formed here as Sam gets onto that wall. Now Sam actually made some of the holds that yes. are on this wall. So I believe. All of the those holds that have the round backer that you see, Sam uh -huh. makes those in Switzerland. They are Swiss granite. And uh, we purchased a few from him last year to take home for our training in the US. And um, we we often look at them, we're route setting, and you like look at them and you're like, well, let's just put that one back. <laughs> that, looks, that looks really hard. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting question, actually, this. What's the deal with? I mean, he makes the holes. Does that give him an advantage? Yeah, you know, I I thought about that yesterday when, I when he, when I saw that he was competing and that they had the holds up. And I suppose he doesn't choose which holds they use. Correct. I mean, it's it's no different than I mean, we all and he's selling them to everybody, yeah, so we everybody all have the, the ability chance. to to get those holds and see them. So. Um, you know, it's it's an advantage because he know he is more knowledgeable on those holds can be more confident in them potentially but I don't think it's an unfair advantage but it is a unique situation mm -hmm. well in in sport climbing for example 
Kilter use uh, holds that are made by some of their athletes. Alex Puccio's carved holds for them. Jan Hollier's carved holds for them. And those appear in World Cups. Obviously, again, they're open to purchase for everybody. But it is an interesting situation. Right, okay, so he moves off that very, very poor... Wobbly. Right hand up to that pebble of doom. He's going to make the clip. You can hear in the background, zombie by the cranberries. Sad news of her death earlier uh, this week or late last week. Really sad to hear that. Great band. Oh, no, Sam! This is so difficult. Oh. Did well not to swear then. It's really <laughs> hard. Oh, heartbreaker. He's going to be disappointed. Man. Hard moves. Young Sublim. I mean, you know, you watch him and you're like, oh, well, he's done well, but has he done enough? There's so many athletes to come. And as, they, as we're going down this list, he's so far ahead everybody else. So far. We're five athletes in now. Kyung Sub Lim has a massive advantage. <sighs> How much are the other athletes going to know? Obviously, they know very little because they're in isolation, but just by the speed of which it's going through, is that going to be obvious to them, do you think? With this many people, yes. When you have one low fall, the athlete directly behind them will notice because they've already been brought out or maybe they get rushed out. But the other athletes don't notice that when you have one low fall mm -hmm. um, but now we've had four in a row here and that is going to be noticeable they're probably behind a little bit in bringing athletes out to the secondary isolation zone and yeah athletes will be like whoa you know it might mess up some people's warm-up times because everybody has a they calculate when they're going to climb how long they're going to be in isolation and they kind of work backwards they want to be warmed up 20 minutes, an hour beforehand. And um, so this this could be rushing a few people into their warm-ups earlier than they had expected. Interesting. So we'll have to wait and see if that affects anyone. Big shout out to the, the folks watching from the Netherlands. We've got people watching from Prague, Turkey. We've got people watching in Italy. People got watching all over England. This route, as Phil Powell rightly points out, is nails. Next up, and on your screen right now, bib number 72 is Young Yun Lee. Another South Korean athlete. Second of three through to the semi finals here today. Another tall athlete. Struggling to see where his harness is sitting. Oh, I think he's wearing those pants. Integrated. Yeah, I was like, um, yeah. a little bit concerned. <laughs> is he's he just tied, tied her up around his waist into a bowline or what? Yeah, okay, he's wearing harness pants, or trousers as we call them, back in England. Reaches up off that very tricky side pull into the left hand. Now we saw his teammates spend a lot of time on this hold. But then of course we saw Andreas Gantner move off it so quickly. But then pop higher up. Okay, he's opting for the hook as well again. Very Korean in style. Oh, I can barely watch. I know. <laughs> So <laughs> really <tense. hard. laughs> like not breathing you know these athletes especially on these delicate slippy holds they are holding so much core tension and trying to stabilize that shoulder in the tool that you know i just i start clenching my my core and my shoulders at the same time watching them on these holds oh no Another pop. More pop than a cheap supermarket aisle. <laughs> we've got roller cola, we've got lemonade, we've got it all. Dear me. More pop than a bowl of Rice Krispies. More pop than... <laughs> I don't know what else has got pop in it. Popcorn. Oh, More pop than there a bowl we of go. <laughs> Kendra just owned me on the pop <laughs> metaphors. Not a metaphor, you know what I'm saying. 
dear me, having a coffee as well. Just for you guys at home, after every um, after every competitor, I write a little note just next to the name on the start list, so I've got some reference to what's going on. So far, there are several uh, names on there that all say low fall, low pop, pop low, low foot right. Really hard climbing. If you're enjoying this, obviously you're a bit of a sadist, but oh, mate. But please do share it. You can hit that share button on both YouTube and Facebook. Like it if you're enjoying it. Stick us a comment in, let us know where you're watching from. Be great to hear from you. Tell us how you're feeling about this finals. Are your my my palms are sweating. Are Have you it? guys doing that at home? You get yeah. nervous watching everybody else climb. It's uh it's pretty spicy this, isn't it? It is. Yeah. More spice than I'm not I'm joking, we're not gonna go there. That's the right kins as they stand. Pauli Salmon and Masud Zenali, Sam Clavian, Young Yun Lee, Andreas Kantner, and Xiong Sub Lim making up the top six. So far, 12 more athletes to go. How many more low pops? Here's Nikolai Primorov. Climbs for Team Russia, but is based out here in Switzerland. Studies out here, uh, works out here rather. He, does he, he work at the university? Something like that? He's an engineer. An engineer. He's very Technical. smart, I know he that. Is. He also coaches uh, youth Swiss athletes. Mm, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. About the university teaching. Maybe that's why I'm thinking. Or maybe I'm just making it up. But he's a great climber. He is. I am looking forward to seeing Nikolai climb this. He's a big lad as well. Tall, muscular, athletic. Great style, great efficiency. Yeah. Look how he's starting here. He's uh, just starting in reverse grip because he knew he was going to go right up into that, that stein pole. That was super efficient. Love that. Impressive. No, oh, he's skipping the pillar out. I love this jumper as well. <laughs> like, he looks like an absolute boss. And his harness matches the, the bibs from yeah, the competition here. Match. Wow. Primov is a winner. Styling. <laughs> is it true that if you look good, you climb better? If you if you think that you look good, okay. you climb better. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Because you're confident about that, right? Mm -hmm. Digging dig your outfit? Yeah. I reckon Nikolai's digging this. Reaches up with the left nice hand, places that pedal. And, oh, jeepers. <sighs> Gosh. So, but, I mean, that was, Nikolai was really smart there. He's trying to go to this hold in a balanced position. There you go. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. I, like, it's impossible to commentate this. Well, Nikolai is more composed than you right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one slipping off the oh. hold. Fair <laughs> comment. Uh, I can't argue with that. Kicks in hard with the right foot, reaches up with the right hand off that left bad pebble, places it, and he'll be glad to get off that left hand. But I'm not sure how much better that right is now. Looks to switch between the two. He's looking for the good spot. So I think close. it's right there, but it's not. doesn't look great either. Okay, now we're going. Makes clip four. Reaches up with that left hand. Another terrible pebble. You can just see the head of the axe moving around so much. Awesome. Places that hook. Kicks in with the left foot. And makes the clip. Awesome. Okay, this is ground. We've only seen Hyung Sub Lim reaching so far. So good to see Nikolai Primorov finally getting up there into the kind of competitive area of the route now. Yep, and there we saw him do three clips in a row. Clips are worth more points than the next hold. So when uh, athletes can, they want to clip ahead of them. That smart climbing there from Primorov. Especially on these uh, slippy holds. When we have good holds and athletes are feeling confident, you don't see them clip ahead as much. But Nikolai just turned on a little bit of speed here. He got to the ice barrel to be Look more at confident. That. He's two and a half minutes ahead of Hyung Sub Lim. Wow. And he hasn't let go of his axe. And he's ahead of, I mean, he's ahead total now. 
He's yeah. in first place, getting After onto that log. log. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay, now we're going. Thanks for everyone who is sending us comments and messages. It's great to hear from you all. Nikolai Primorov moving really well through clip 10 now. Off the log and onto that start of the head wall. So now I, I had to pause a moment here. I was like, where's the next hold? Mm -hmm. It's way out right there. Cool move. So he's got to step across onto that volume. Love that. It's not right often there. we see the use of footholds. You know, specific yep. footholds. You have to use that for your feet if you want to move across. That's really not that common, certainly in the years that I've been following the tour. No, not not common. We did see there was a foot placed, an actual foot hold yes, for yesterday. the women's qualifier. Saw that. Yeah, and that was unique. Like often we step on the holds that we used our tools on. So you gotta commit one hundred percent to that volume. It looks like it. Just feet? Surely not. It must be too steep. But look at that. Nikolai is... Nikolai is top. Whoa! Oh, that is so good! That is one of the no best moves way. I have ever seen set in an ice climbing competition. Is he allowed to do that? I don't know. He is allowed to he do it. Shiga, the president, says he's allowed to do it. That is by far one of the best moves I have ever seen set in an ice climbing competition, Kendra. Agreed. That was World Cup bouldering style. <laughs> <laughs> we're mixing the formats. Now we're talking. The root setters must be so pleased that someone's actually up there. <laughs> I, I am sure they are thrilled. That they was are rejoicing. so good. That was so good. Nikolai. Woohoo! This is great. I don't know about you guys at home, but I'm having a really good time. So Primanov now. That was so cool. It was so cool. As I saw it, I was like, he's got to commit to it. And yeah. that bridge. And the, oh, so what else awesome. is coming here? Now I'm excited to see what the rest of the route presents. Yeah. I mean, it looks a little bit more conventional just from a quick glance. And there's not many places that you can set something like that. So we're seeing a strong reverse grip there. And that's an intellect hold. I was going to say it looks intellect. Oh, and there he pops out of that intellect hold. Probably the best hold on the route. Well, but look at the way it's placed. <sighs> so bad. Hey, what an awesome effort there from Nikolai Primorov. High point. Amazing style. You know, and, and Nikolai has no idea at this point that he's so far ahead of everybody else. He's it's probably got a good idea. <laughs> true, because it's gone fast, but still. He's Crazy not happy about that, move. but look at, you know, he was working hard up there. And so, I need to go and shake the roots at his hand after this. That was so cool. Now, what's going to be really interesting, Nikolai is, um, he's tall, but he's, he's athletic in build. You know, he's not very, uh, he's not very heavy, um, and he's kind of light. The next guy climbing is Dmitry Grabenikov. Um, we saw Dmitry for the first time in World Cups. Uh, in 2015 when he competed in Kirov, but first time on the tour was last year. Now this guy's like 88 kilos. He's six foot four. And he has slimmed down this he year from last year, yeah. Weight. Yeah, I said that to him and he said he hadn't and I wasn't going to argue with him. But um, he he's definitely slimmed down a bit. That said, he's still a big guy. He moves really well, but that coordination move is going to be very, very interesting to see how he deals with that. I'm so excited to see that action replay of that coordination move. That was easily one of the coolest things I've seen on the tools. Agreed. Look at that. That is a great angle. Oh, that was so good. So good. <laughs> All the guys here in the broadcast tent, I'm going to call it sweet. Sounds more official. In the broadcast suite all jumped up when he did that. Everybody was loving that. Lots of people getting involved on the comments now. <laughs> really enjoying that. People are saying, how has he done that? Whoa. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Great to have you all on board. Gravity off. Mental setting. Hey, Katie Forrester. Great to have you on board. Pretty cool. This looks hard, and I bet it's even harder than it looks. You are totally right. 
So we have a question here. What is an intellect hold? Yes, tell us what an intellect hold is. An intellect hold, uh, they're made by Top Point in Russia, and it is a plastic hold with an inset metal plate that has drilled divots in it. And so you use the hold on that metal plate, and you've got to get the tip of your pick in one of those holes. They are pretty good once you're on them, but that hold is a uh, sloped or an angled plate on the hold, plus it's upside down or kind of angled to the side too, so that was like an so what you're saying is it's really under bad. cling, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the hole in it is good, but the angle that it's at, if you get the right angle of pull on that, it's gonna be great. But um, as you saw, Nikolai, like that's, they're gonna have to get really high on it for it to be good. Well, here is Dmitry Grevenikov. Climbed really well last year, made finals in Beijing, placing sixth. Only 26 years old. Here he goes. He's also really tough. He is. Not wanting to ham it up, but while we were here last year, in the speed comp, he put an axe through his finger, and instead of going to hospital, give it a wash, taped it up, and then competed in the men's semi-finals later on that day. Very, very inspiring stuff indeed. Finished 11th on that comp. Impressive. So moving slowly. There we go, big reach over the left. All quiet while Dmitry Grubenikov just works out this ever so delicate sequence. I've seen so many people fall victim around these three holds. We saw Pauli Salmanen, Masud Zainali, Andreas Gantner, Sam Clavien, and Yunyeon Lee all fall within the three meters that you can see now on that wall. Hopefully, Dmitry Gubrenikov works out what he needs to do, moves confidently, and moves past that section. Gets a little bit higher on the route. Would be great to see him in the finals later today. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to a very chilly Sazfe. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined today by the USA's Kendra Stritch. You are watching the men's lead semi-finals, the first round of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. This is the eighth competitor out in this of so eighth of 18. Do we have 18? We do. Have we do 18. have 18. Yeah, we had 16 in the women's due to that big tie, but 18 in the men's. Right here he is. He's on the Horrible, horrible pebble. Very poor placement. Makes the clip. Big reach. Locks that left hand down. Uses his height to good advantage there. Gets some weight behind that hold. Just to reset his center of gravity. Get himself in balance for the next move. Another hard, hard move to a poor pebble. Feeling around for the good spot on that big hold. Reaches up, makes the clip. Gets that terrible placement with the left hand and now just needs to make that move up and right to relative security. And that, puts, that will put him into third. I think that's about our third place point. Yeah, he is third now because Sam fell going off that hold. Sam Clavien. Oh no, he fell below that maybe. He yeah, fell yeah, below yeah. that, but um, Andreas. Ah, uh, Gantner, yes, Gantner that's who it was, was yeah. There, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, this is gonna be more difficult for Grabenikov. Very tall. It's gonna be trickier to keep those feet from the behind the structure. He has to keep them high, which puts more stress on the arms, more stress on the core, more tiring. Reaches straight across into that barrel, flicks into the fig nine over the right arm. Has a quick shake with two minutes and 56 seconds left. Look how far behind Primorov is he is. A whole one minute and 26 seconds. But if he moves up this barrel quickly, uh, 
up the barrel and up the log quickly, then maybe we'll see him on that coordination move. Come on, Dimitri. He had trouble placing his axes yesterday as well. I think probably a product of the fact that he has such aggressively downturned tools. Certainly not a strength issue. Really struggling to get a good stick there. And this really is the only competition where we swing into anything. Mm -hmm. Because the ice always has drilled pockets, but the, the logs here in Sasve we swing into. And so a lot of athletes, you know, don't get much practice. Oh no! And he's off. So that will be, that'll be second place. It will be second place. For now. But look how upset he is. He doesn't know. No, he definitely doesn't know what's gone on before. Still a lot of athletes to come, but that does, as Kendra correctly says, put him into second place. His teammates will be able to give him the relative good news. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one person ahead of him at this point. Crazy. Still a lot of athletes to come, though. Tristan Ladevon next of France, one of the two Ladevon brothers. Alexei Marshalov will follow him. Nikolai Kozovlev, then Young Kie, Kwan, Alexei Dengin, Maxim Tomilov, Kevin Huser, Alexei Tomilov, Lucas Gertz, and Mohamed Reza Safdarian will finish proceedings later this afternoon. If you want to get in touch with us, then you can do so using that hashtag, UIAA Ice Climbing. You can also contact us using the comments box There it is, there's that hashtag. Drop us a comment in the live stream, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Keeping an eye on both of those. And if you want to contact me directly, you can do, and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Do so using Instagram on at Liam Lonsdale. So there is Tristan Ladevar. Better known for his speed climbing than his lead climbing. Only 19 years old. His best result last year was 20th in Beijing, so he's already bettered that. We're in bib number 99. He's taking a last look at this route. It was a surprise to see that his brother didn't make semi-finals yesterday. Yeah, Luna's had an exceptional season in the European Cup so far. He's taken um, at least one first place. Two, it, two definitely yeah. two, I think, actually, yeah. Okay, here goes Tristan, big brother. A lot of camaraderie in the French team, but those two are definitely fans. <laughs> They're each other's biggest fan. Yeah, very close as brothers. No doubt Luna will be somewhere around the structure. You'll probably see his face pop up on the screen at some <laughs> point. Cheering on his brother. Yeah, he'll be out there making a lot of noise. Just releasing that left hand. Placing it on that sketchy, sketchy placement, but looks pretty confident. There, he's moving uh, efficiently and quickly so far. Great clip there. No bother at all on that terrible hold. Using the left hand just to hold that in place. So we saw Sam do this and couldn't recover when his upper tool slipped. Awesome crimp strength though. That just goes to show his rock climbing pedigree. The brothers are based in the south of France. They have a lot of very good rock climbing around them. They do a lot of rock climbing together. So great to see them use that strength. Just 
Just using that right hand to stabilize himself. Look at that. Point, uh, he's 23 seconds ahead of Primorov. I don't know if that's going to be a good decision or not. Placing that hook as a reverse hook with the right hand, matching him with the left. Makes one clip, two clips. Doesn't go for the third. Kicks in instead. Look at the speed on him now. He's really picking it up. Yep. There's his brother, you can see there in the navy blue jacket below him, sunglasses on his head, that's Luna Ladevon, and other teammate Marion Thomas. Whoa, almost lost his tool, almost lost himself. Goes DTS, he doesn't want to use a fig four. It's a great clip. You know, these guys are so strong and so used to cutting feet and stuff like that, but, you know, it can waste the energy that you're going to need higher up. Or well, so far, just climbing to where he's got has put him into fourth place. Into that fig nine over the right hand, just needs to untangle himself. There we go. Watch him flick that to a four as he reaches up now. He'll reach up and try and place, get a good stick in that log. Boom, first time. Now we're talking. Always oh, in all sorts of tangles. Ale Tristan. You can hear the French team cheering him on now. Awesome work. There's Cora Jury in the white hat. With him every step of the way. Three minutes and 30 on the clock. It's another good clip. Slightly behind Primorov. Primorov was so fast on the ice barrel. Now let's see what Tristan Ladevon makes of this move. <laughs> Much shorter than Primorov. He's going to reach across to make the clip. Now he needs to get that foothold placed. Has he read it? Taking a moment to catch his breath, shake out his hands here, figure out what his move is. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Come on, Tristan. I'd love him to do this move. Okay, so he's committed with one foot across. Is he going to bridge? Looks like he might see it. He's got to get, get into a more balanced position. Oh, he's going to die. He's going to <laughs> run and jump. No way. You absolute nutcase. No, he's not. <laughs> I'm so glad that he didn't do that. We oh thought my gosh. That there would be no recovery from that. <laughs> he's just running head first at a concrete pillar. <laughs> gosh. Whole French team watching really close by. They want to tell him what to do, but they're not allowed. Needs to just build that left foot up. And Primorov read this so well. He did. Kicks in with the right foot. There Pushes we across. Go. Now, will he get the left foot up? Come on, Tristan. Oh, man, he's going to go for it, isn't he? He really is. You absolute nutter. He knows that he shouldn't. He knows that there's <laughs> got to be a different way. My mind is telling me no. <laughs> we don't yes, set yes, yes. Up. This is it. This is it. Come on. Yes, now he's starting to get the move. He's yeah, skipping the hold altogether, but he's going to have to because he's so short. Gets the heel down. Oh, my gosh. Come on, Tristan. This is wild. This is hard. He hits yes. It. <laughs> he's done it. Tristan Lenderman has absolutely tore it down. What a monster. That was even more impressive than Primorov, the 19-year-old Frenchman, is on fire. Last year, we saw Swiss Air with Yannick Glatard. This year is the year of Air France. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ladovan brothers are in town, and they mean business. Come on, Tristan. 50 seconds to go. He's a whole 1 minute 20 seconds behind Primorov. But if he can use that hold above him, that tiny, horrible hold, then he's got a good chance of going into first place. Come on, dude. So he knows that he lost a lot of time there. And you can see he ramped up the speed on that ice barrel, but he's got to take his time on these holds. Because if he can just... Brilliant effort from Tristan Ladevon. Pushes across with that right hand and connects with the left. 
Builds his feet up. Now, can he get into that intellect hold? He's got 15 seconds to go. The crowd are really behind him in Sazfe. Come on, Tristan. That's good. If he can move off it, then he's going to be in the lead. Come on. Five seconds. He's doing it. Make the cliff. Yes. Into first place there. He committed to that intellect Make the hold. cliff. Time. Oh, yes. He got the cliff. Will that count? We don't know. Awesome work. He's so psyched with that. <laughs> Tristan Lanavon. Hats off, my son. Hats off. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Kendra, this is so good. This is so happy. Look at him. <laughs> good lad. So amazing that we have athletes getting to that point after those first four really low falls. <laughs> he is absolutely knackered. I sincerely, sincerely hope that that sees him through to the finals. And if it doesn't, then I tell you what, he has got something to be proud of. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful to stay so composed, to stay so motivated, and still to give it full beans after being in that position for so long. He's got a bright future ahead of him in ice climbing. If that guy sticks with comps, then he could definitely be a champion. That was so Absolutely. impressive. Is this the way that route setting in ice climbing comps is going to go? <laughs> I mean, we're seeing it in other forms of climbing. So I think, I mean, I think that's a really great use of it because it's not a low percent, a completely low percentage move. We're not just jumping to something. I mean, what he did there was different to Primorov because Primorov had the placement. Yep. He didn't. Tristan had like You're dynamically right. went to it. Two tickets to the gun show. Oh, so good. Yeah, that was exciting. That's got really goosebumps. unique. It is unique cold. Route setting. <laughs> oh, man, that was so sick. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I don't even know what to say. I have nothing else to say. That was quite simply one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> this is so exciting. Okay, breathe. I wish we had seen more athletes up there. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You know, it's... But it does make it special now that, you know, just a few have got there. True. So, Tristan was athlete number nine, which means that we have another nine athletes to go. Theoretically, even with a performance like that, he could be bumped out. But he does sit in first place at the moment. Next up, very talented young Russian climber, Alexei Marshalov. 23 years old, very quiet young man, very talented. Placed ninth in Beijing, 14th in Chongsong, and 16th in the Rabenstein. A lot of potential. Moving very quickly through those lower logs. Moving confidently here. Let's see if he can keep up his speed and confidence through these this tricky lower section. I've just been informed that that 14th clip didn't count for Tristan Ladevon. It was just outside the time. But he still had the hold, so. He had the hold, yeah, no, for sure. He's in first place, first but place just now. a shame that he, uh, that he missed that. Great effort, great effort. If you are just joining us, I hate to say it, but you, are, you have missed some excellent action. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be more of it for you. You're watching the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup lead semi-finals, the first of the season here in Saz Fay. The women climb this morning, the men are climbing now, and we'll be live with the finals later today. In fact, we'll be live at 7 p.m. local time. That's one hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. If you're not sure how that transposes to your time zone, then make sure you like on YouTube, uh, sorry, like on Facebook, the UIAA channel, and subscribe on YouTube to the UIAA channel, and you'll be notified when we go live. You'll also see what time we're due to go live in your time zone. Alexei Marshalov, 23-year-old Russian, moving very confidently through those first moves. Five minutes on the clock. 
Let's see where that puts him just in the time rankings. Those graphics on the top left of the screen are a new addition this year. They don't mean anything in terms of score. It just gives you an idea of how well the athletes move in relative to their competitors. So at the moment, he's just a little bit off the fastest pace, which was set by Luna Ladovon a couple of minutes ago. If you are just joining us, then why not drop us a comment in the comments box or in the chat box. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Who are you supporting? And if you have missed any of the action, don't worry. All of the Ice Climbing World Cup videos will be available to watch as a replay on YouTube. The channel is UIAA Mountains. Marshall Ave is moving into this traverse section that some of the athletes have been able to get through very quickly. So we'll see how he navigates the ice barrel and the log. Moves up into the upper part of the ice barrel. Looks to traverse around it. He's really had no difficulty up until here. So we'll see if he can move through this section. I'd love to see what he does with that volume sideways jump. Someone tuning in from Wichita. Shout out to the Wichita Massive. Here he goes, into the log. I'm looking forward to seeing him on the next move. This is so exciting. Dubai, Dubai, let's get through this. Yeah, I guess with the, the route setting, you know, as I mentioned before, is this what we're going to see more of? It only takes one person to have the guts to set that move for somebody else to think, oh, well, I could set something similar, actually. But imagine if you did it like this or like this true yeah i mean that's that's the great thing about getting new route setters into the mix mm -hmm. because we get new ideas and obviously a route setter that was bold enough <laughs> to do something different that's great so makes the clip that's clip number 11 where is he in the pace he's a minute behind primarov's pace about 40 seconds off Ladovan's pace. Shout out to Australia. Oh, look, he's trying to span it. It's just such an alien move. It's so interesting to see them working it out. Kicks in hard to the volume. Whoa, it's too far, Alexei. You're going to have to get creative. This is so cool. I think he can reach it. He just needs his feet repositioned. You think? I think so. Oh. Like that left arm isn't even fully extended. Yeah. But such a bad... Yeah, I mean, you're totally right. If he can move that left foot, then he's got a good chance of hitting it. One minute, 19 seconds on the clock for Alexei Marshalov of Russia. His teammates are out there yelling at him to go. What do you think? Oh, he's kicked in high, look. Just moves the rope off his head. He's going to go hands-free. No, he's not. Oh, watch your noggin. There we go. Oh, he's so close. The good part's farther right, though. Oh, this is so frustrating. You can see that he really just wants to reach it, but he's not willing. I mean, that's what I loved about Tristan Ladovan just then. The, the creativity, the... What's the word I'm looking for? The courage to just, you know, throw that move out there. Absolutely. To just go, do you know what? I'm going to die now. And that's it. He's no. out. What a shame. I was almost out of time there, too. I had a feeling that was going to happen. He just didn't look like he was going to commit to it, and that yep. is what that needs, is full commitment. Big shout-out to Lebanon. Great to have people tuning in from Lebanon. Might be making a visit back to Lebanon. 
later this year. So Alexi Marshall off falls just before that wonderful move. Let's have a look at his replay. He did touch the hold, though. So he'll get the point for the touch. Hmm. Yes. Just thinking there as it's happening. Yeah, he moved through that bottom section so well. Didn't, like you said earlier, it didn't cause him any problems. So we have about 100 World Cup athletes here this weekend. Awesome. We have 18 competing in the men's semifinal right now. And so everybody else is out there. They're in the structure cheering each other on. Some people are back in their hotel rooms watching the live stream. Oh, that was such a shame. Do you know how many countries we have represented today? 194. 194 countries. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the first number that came into my head. I can tell you how many countries we have represented today. Get your fingers out, you ready? Yep. Iran, Switzerland, Russia, Korea, France, Liechtenstein, Finland. Switzerland. Did I say Switzerland already? I think I said Switzerland. So seven, seven countries represented today. There's a look at those rankings so far. That's pretty good. Split, seven. Yeah, it's a great split across... 18. Uh, 18 places in the men, 16 in the women because of that tie. Next up, Nikolai Kuzovlev. He took gold medal yesterday in a thrilling speed final. It was very, very interesting to watch. He had two really poor runs, one of which was a DNF. The second was just a poor, a poor run completely. And then the third and final run was absolutely stunning. He beat everybody with a 8.5 second finish, leaving Kartashev reeling. So Nikolai Kuzovlev now, who finished second overall last year, current world ranked number two, took a silver medal in Durango, gold medal in Beijing, got a bronze medal in Rabenstein, finished fourth here in Sazfe, 35 years old. If you are just joining us, my name is Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined today by Kendra Stritch of the USA. You are watching the men's lead semi-finals of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup Tour. Drop us a comment or a question in the comments box or the chat box, depending whether you're watching YouTube or Facebook. And there are the stand-ins as they happen. Primorov and Ladovan tied because he didn't get the clip. Right. And there is up to now the clips so what we've got just to explain if you don't know already this year we have graphics to show the speed of the t oh wow and he's off he was definitely surprised by that oh. i thought we were done with all this low pop i thought no. we were done with the pop no we are not done with the pop because of lev another victim of the desperately technical route setting at the start of that route He's just looking at that old leg. What happened? I don't know the Russian for that, but I'm sure that's what he's thinking. Oh, Kuzovlev gutted for you, mate. Just watch that again. I'm sure after his success last night, he was excited oh, to climb right well. Tool. It was the right tool. Watch it. Oh! Even in a figure four. Even in a fig four. Pop. Okay. Well, that's the Kuzov left done. <laughs> On to the next one. Look at that standing now. So Hyung Sub Lim still hanging in there. I still think it's unlikely that he's going to make finals. But at the moment, he's still strong position in fifth. Dmitry Grubedikov fourth, Alexei Marshall off third, Tristan Ladovan and Nikolai Primorov tied for first place. 
after doing that crazy, crazy dyno. Great question here coming in on Facebook, which says, how do they turn... Oh, I'll try that again. How do they determine how much time to give a route? Well, it's up to the route setters, and the judges will weigh in on that, also the head head judge for the weekend. But um, they want to give them you know, enough to have an opportunity to get to the top of the climb if you just move the whole time. We want to eliminate the athletes just shaking out and um, being able to chill on route. So we... It's a fine balance, I guess. It is. You've got to keep it fast-paced and exciting, but at the same time, you don't want people just decking it all the time. Not decking it, but falling, you know? There's the hashtag as well, UIAA Ice Climbing. You can get in touch with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Use that hashtag. You can also contact me directly if you have a question that you want to get in touch with that you don't want to put out there publicly. Do that on Instagram is the best place, at Liam Lonsdale. There is Young Hye Kwon on South Korea. 41 years old. Finished 10th overall last year. Here in South Fei, placed 8th, so he did make the finals. Also made finals and placed 8th in Rabenstein 2. 10th in Chongsong. It was 11th in Durango. An experienced climber. We're going to be able to hopefully see him move through this bottom section with confidence. And no pops. No pops. Do you remember that NSYNC song? Pop. Dirty pop. It's a great song. <laughs> Some solid haircuts. 2001, maybe. It was a good year. I don't recall that song. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so here goes, here goes Yung Hye Kwon on those first wooden pillars. Oh, little foot pop. No pop. No pops, come on. Let's see if we can get through this whole bottom section without saying pop. Great stance there, real poised to place that left tool. He's gone for the front on approach. Matches in with the right hand. Go on, gets the left hand on. And, okay. Composes himself, moves the feet, needs to really assert those feet. Doesn't want to be wobbling around on that pebble. Oh no. We have to say it. Popped off that. Young Hei Kwon. Another victim of the perilous pop. The primary part of the route. So yeah. earlier, <laughs> Liam told you how he has low, low fall for multiple athletes earlier on. He's now just writing pop next to people. So somebody's asking online about how the routes are judged, um, or, or rather how the scoring's judged. Maybe you can explain a little bit about that. Sure, absolutely. So each clip, watching that pop again. So <laughs> Heartbreaking pop. Watch pop pop. Oh, it's even a spark then. A little sparky pop. Each clip is uh, numbered and worth a point, a full point. So you, these athletes are starting with I think three clips yeah. clipped here. So they'll start with a, a three, and then as they go up each clip, they get above that, four, five, six. And then each hold that they progress to then gets them a point one, two, three, four, and so on. For example, if they made the first clip after the first three, that'd be four. The so next the clip would be yep, four. four. And then if they got the hold after that, it would be point one. No. no, it's actually the holds are also numbered. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah, say that's the 
say that's the like sixth hold, so it would yeah, be yeah, yeah. four point six. Four point six, yeah, yeah. So they're actually progressing separate from each other. Yeah. But so then that's the the ones and the tens, mm -hmm. tenths. Um, so then that hundredths, so point zero yeah. zero. That's where you get the one. Yeah. For touching the next yes. hold. Touching it, using it. Yeah. Moving off it. Correct. Because you don't get the full points for a hold until it's the only hold you're touching. Yes. So as soon as you release your tool from the yes. last hold, then you move on to that next hold. So it would be, it would go from like a zero seven one to a zero eight. Love that. Love that. Very clear. Probably clear as mud. We'll it's keep explaining it as we go along. Yep. And uh, we'll have the results at the end as well. Or certainly we'll have the results in time for the finals. We'll be able to explain a little bit more now. But before we do more explaining, let's talk about this guy, Alexi Dengin. Awesome athlete. Brilliant character. One of the main players on the tour. He's 35 years old from Russia. Gold medalist in Durango last year. Awesome. What a moment that was when he won his first gold medal in Durango last year. He finished fourth overall. Made finals in Beijing, finishing seventh. Just missed out on finals, finishing ninth in Chongsong. Made finals here, also finishing seventh. And finished sixth in Rabenstein. Real fun guy. Very, very important part of the, the tour family. I found out this weekend that he's a new father. He is, yes. He just had a little baby a couple of months ago. Very cool. But he's left the child at home to go ice climbing. <laughs> Representing his country. Crimping that right hand. Confidently moving here. Matches in. <clears throat> Excuse me, on that terrible pebble. Generates some momentum. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Come on, take it. Just looking for the best position with that left hand. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, I don't want to watch. Come on, Dengen. Yeah, I have a hard time commenting oh. through this section because I'm just so tense watching this. <sighs> we need like a dum -dum. Dum -dum. You know, like tense music, <laughs> tension bed. The Jaws music? Yeah. Oh, oh, he's just tied oh my up God. to it. Like she <laughs> Disaster style Dengen just dynoed to that flipping hold. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> right, okay, let's see what he does with the next move. I can't I believe he just did that. I think a lot of people have thought that hold was going to be better than it is. <laughs> Dynoable, apparently. Yeah. I mean, it's like giant compared to the other holds. Well, it certainly bodes well for him as he moves higher up this route and the dyno becomes more and more important. Yeah, that was just practice for that upper move. <laughs> So, here he goes. Careful not to place his feet around the side of the structure. Makes the clip. Uses the left hand just to brace that head of the axe. And there's another clip. As he traverses along that horizontal panel and heads towards the so he's ice not ball. too bad on time. He's 55 seconds behind the lead. But it would benefit him to be able to move through this barrel and log quickly. It's interesting to see that, actually, Kendra. You know, clip nine, Ladafon was ahead of Primorov, but then clip 10, he was quite behind. So he lost so much time on that barrel. Come on, Dengue. Gets the hook instead of trying to swing a stick in. You know, it does benefit the athletes that they were on that log yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so these spots that they're hooking into are soft spots where everybody swung into. 
yesterday. Well, are they also more prone to blow? They can be, but probably not yet. This was a newly finished log. Mm -hmm. Like we got a new log for this competition. So they're not super mushy. Okay, so now is this move that has been nothing short of spectacular. The root setters have done an incredible job with this move. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then watch very carefully. That entreprise triangular volume to the right of Alexi Dengin's right foot is the only thing between him and the next hold, which is on the far right-hand side of that panel. Dengin will kick in with the left, reach across and make the clip. And now he's got to try and work out how to do it. Nikolai Primorov managed to static the move and then did a coordination move. Is he going to try and skip this? Sure. No, no, but he got that next clip. Which is really smart. Yeah. On top rope. He is going to try, try and skip it. He, he can't do that. No, that would be impossible. <laughs> I mean, I know those volumes really well. Dude, we, no we, way. We say it's impossible. Somebody, somebody's going to do it. Like, even with chalk <laughs> and skin, you're not going to be able to wrap that and hold it. Even on a sort of overhanging wall, it's such a bad volume. It's hard to do that on a slab. True. So, Dengin now spots the hold. You can see what he has to do. Tristan Ladavon jumped full pelt and caught the hold dynamically. Primorov went static and then kicked his feet across in a coordination style move. Let's see what Alexi Dengin makes of it. Whoa. Now, Alexi is shorter than the last few guys that we've seen. Needs you can see that. I'd say he's a similar height to Tristan. Tristan's not, maybe he's a little bit shorter actually. He is Tristan, short, yeah. yeah. Tristan's shorter than me, but Alexi's quite a bit shorter than me. Mm. So he's gonna have to adjust his feet here. 48 seconds on the clock for Alexi Dengin. What's he gonna do? Is it going to scupper another Russian? Or is he going to work it out? Come on, Alexi. He's going to have to go. So by making that higher clip, though, he does put himself in front of... Marshalov. Marshalov. He does. Come on, Dengen. Oh, my gosh. This is the scariest thing. <laughs> He's going to try and jump across. He is, he's got his hands free, he jumps, oh he sticks gosh. it! Yes! yes. <laughs> Alexi Dengin sticks it! He just needed to do it first time. Unbelievable! And he's out of time. Oh, amazing work, but so cool to stick the move. <laughs> oh, he's so passionate. So pumped that he's he stuck that. He knew that he still have done it first go, though. Oh, Alexi, so good, so good. That was amazing. And he was fully hands-free. Yeah. So we've seen it done three different ways now. He's having a minute just to calm himself down. He knows that he lost a lot of time there. Just trying to work out what to do. It's a shame. It's a shame to be frustrated because it's so cool that he did, excuse me, did the move. But I can understand why he's frustrated because he was so indecisive. I love how as soon as he hit that, he did not lose a beat. He knew that he was out of time, and he just started speeding upwards to get that next clip. So good. What do you reckon? Is Maxim Tomilov going to do that move? Yeah. Is he? No problem. He's tall enough, I guess. I think they're experienced enough, too. I mean, those guys have been, the Tomilov brothers have been climbing for so long. Quite a while. Yeah. I dominate him. I mean, he died off the low move. That was That's the crazy thing. It was thing. practice. To be so indecisive. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a real shame that he lost that momentum there for the uh, for that move. But super cool that he stuck it. We have five athletes left. Five athletes left. Okay, let me do some quick maths. Eight will go to the finals this evening. So, Cheong Sub Lim has been pushed down into sixth place. 
we'll just have to wait and see what the rest of the guys do. So as it stands, Nikolai Primorov, Tristan Ladovant, a joint first, followed by Alexei Dengin in third, Alexei Marjolov in fourth, Dmitry Grabenikov in fifth, the Russians dominating up there, only Tristan Ledevon managing to penetrate that top five. Hyung Sub Lem in sixth, Andrea Skantner in seventh, and at the moment, Young Gyeon Lee in eighth. But here is Maxim Tomilov. And if anyone knows anything about climbing hard and doing it consistently, it's this guy. Bib number 32. Finished second overall last year. Took a bronze medal in Durango. Bronze medal in Chongsong. He took a bronze medal here in Saz Fei. The silver medal in Rabenstein. He won the overall the year before and the year before that. And probably the year before that? Yes, he did win it the year before <laughs> that. Didn't win it in 2013. Young, uh, but you could Young maybe Park even go there. back further and he find He won it in 2012 as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2012, 2014, 2015, 2016. Not bad. When I started in 2012, they'd already been competing for five years. My records only go back to 2011, yeah. ones that I can get access to. Yeah, the, if you want to go back to the older ones, you can find them on the UIAA website. Is that right? You can, but you've got to like go into the individual files. They just have like PDFs out there. <laughs> right, okay. Do some digging. Yep. Right. I'm good with the last four years, five years. <laughs> last five years is a lot of years of results. But yeah, it would be interesting to see how they did way back when. So, Maxim Tomilov on that pebble. Locks it down deeply. Eyes laser focused on that next hold. Hasn't, has opted to not make the click yeah. off that pebble. I mean, he's, he's used to making it much higher on a climb, so. He's not going to do what I think he's going to do. Come on, make the clip. Oh, that's such a bad hole. Clipping. You can see that next pebble. Here we go. Reaches across with the right hand around the corner. <laughs> Moving at a very steady pace. Not too fast. But he's certainly not hanging around either. Uses that excellent hip flexibility. Those hips don't lie. Reaches across to make the clip. commits to the ice barrel. 27 seconds behind Luna Ladovan. Let's see if he speeds up through this easier or more secure section usually, or if he's just gonna keep this consistent pace. He had some trouble getting his axe into the log yesterday. We'll see how he fares today. Hits it first time, no, second time. Okay, so he's moving up the log nicely now. There's that hip flexibility again there. Really, really <laughs> strong. Long legs. So places the axis right in the top of that log. And the next move is that wonderful move. Going right into that split. Seems like he already has a good idea of what he wants to do here. He's going to go for that upper clip too, I think. Or not. Looked like he was looking at it. Maybe he's going to go for it now. Nope.
Not sure. He's just working out the best hand placement. Yeah, he is going to go for that clip. Smart move. And here comes the fun. He's got the longest reach we've seen yet. Yes, so that. good. <laughs> so good. Awesome. Wow. Really cool. That's four different ways it's been done. That's wild. That was like a spider move. That was awesome. Now he's off and running. He has a minute 35 left. Maybe we're going to see our first top. Maybe we'll get to check out the route above that intellect. Okay, here we go. Stands in the ice barrel. Interesting. Yeah. Just giving him a bit of forward pressure. Makes the clip with just less than one minute remaining. Teammates are out there yelling, telling him that he's got one minute left. He's in first place now with that clip. A stand up tall. Whoa, strong nice. there off that right hand. Really strong. Flips in with the fig four over the right arm. That move, that hold that he just left. That was a hold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and oh. he pops. Great effort, nonetheless, from Maxim Tomilov climbing his way into first place. Almost, almost was going to time out anyway. Brilliant work there from the Russian, executed with style and with very calm composure. He was so chilled there. Everything he did was just measured. <laughs> Look at how he, dro he got dropped right onto the stage with the water waiting right there. Clinical. <laughs> Precision. So Style. Good. So good. So let's have a look at those replays. just consistently moved through that lower section. Through the traverse, we didn't. He didn't even pause that much on the the spider move. That Amazing. was wild. That was such a cool move, and he he just looked, like I say, clinical. So composed, and for such a big guy, he tucked up really tight. So there are the standings at present. Andreas Gantner sits in eighth, Young Sublim in seventh, Dmitry Grebenikov in sixth, Alexi, Mar Alexi Marshalov in fifth, Dengen in fourth, Tristan Ladovon and Nikolai Primorov tied for second, Maxim Tomilov in first. So we only have four left, so the top four on that li list are progressing to finals this so evening. So that means we've got French in a final, Tristan Ladovon. Awesome work for the 19-year-old. First senior final. Next up is Kevin Huser, another very talented Swiss climber. I like to describe Kevin's climbing style as disaster style. He just throws himself at the wall 
almost with a reckless disregard for the style. But you know what? It seems to work. Very precise with those crazy wild moves. And he gets that. I mean, he's in finals. Qualified fourth. Hometown crowd. And he's young as well. He is. He's been competing in the Adult World Cup since he was 16, which is the minimum age. Yeah. Really genuine, awesome guy to hang out with. And he's psyched. Mm -hmm. Like, just psyched. I met him a few times out at the cliff in Santa Linea, northern Spain. He's just tearing it down. This is the only competition he's doing this year. Yeah, he has military service, I believe. Well, he's also he's done with that in uh, a couple of months, and he's headed to New Zealand for a couple of months. Nice. And um, then on to some other climbing trips. Cool. Got all the knowledge, aren't you? So here he goes up with the left hand to that very poor hold, and he's just looking for the right placement. Isn't finding it. That's the spot. <laughs> <laughs> This is anti-style this, you've got to be so precise, and he likes to move quickly. But he is so strong, you can see he's keeping that tool very, very quiet. He's going to figure for... Oh no, Kevin! No! Oh, Kevin! Oh man. That's a shame. Oh, what do you say? Pop. Pop. Brutal. Oh, Kevin. It's been exciting and heartbreaking. This semi final, it's an emotional roller coaster. Oh, I'm so gutted for Kevin. We still have one more Swiss guy. We have Lucas Gertz. Maybe he will be the only Swiss representative in the men's finals later. We've got three Swiss women in the finals. I know, it's very exciting. So cool. The team has come out really strong this year. I'm sure that the crowd here will be really quiet for them. No. Nah. Gosh, it's, it's wild crazy. when it fills up. Good question coming on Facebook. Has the figure four worked for anybody on that move? Yes. Who did it work for? Because I was just thinking that then. Um, the Korean. Yes, it did, but then he popped off after it. Correct. <laughs> oh. Oh. So yes, it was Young Hye, uh, Young Yeon Lee that used the figure four, got to the pebble, and then pebble popped. Yeah, he was moving to the next yeah. the hold beyond yeah, the pebble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what a shame. Kevin. And the thing is, he won't know how many people have popped there. Wow, he will shortly. Well, he will, yeah. No, I mean, now he'll know. <laughs> he'll know precisely how many people have popped. In particular, of that sequence with the pebble. I can't believe that. Maybe all of the, the people that have popped off that hold can get together and destroy it later. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're going to have a ceremonial <laughs> destruction of the popping pebble. Like Office Space style. What's that? Do you know that movie? No. It's an American movie where they, uh, <laughs> some office workers uh -huh. end up getting together and they go throw a bunch of office equipment off a cliff and... You know, sounds like fly it tipping. With. <laughs> sounds like fly tipping, which is illegal and really bad for the environment. <laughs> it's a movie. Okay, okay, so it's not real. Fine. Right, well, back to the action. <laughs> That's about American strange movies, and we'll talk more about ice climbing. There on your screen is the older brother, Alexei Tomilov. Alexei is 34 years old. 
Last year he finished fifth overall. Fifth in Durango, tenth in Beijing, eighth in Chongsong. He took a silver medal here in Sazfe. And fifth in Rabenstein. The year before he finished fourth overall with silver and bronze medals to his name. No stranger to that podium. Certainly capable of getting another podium here today. People are asking what a figure four is. Figure four is when you put your opposite leg over your arm. So if you're holding on to your tool with your right arm, you're going to put your left leg over it. That's a figure four. And if you put your same leg over the arm, so your right leg over your right arm, that would be a figure nine. There is, I believe, on YouTube, on the UIAA YouTube channel, a terminology dragon buster video that myself and Noah Bake made last year here at Sazfe. So if you aren't familiar with some of the jargon and terminology that we use, we will try and explain it as we go, but there's a nice little guide that you can see just there. Right, so Alexei Tomilov, older brother of Maxim Tomilov, who currently sits in first place, moves across to that very tenuous right hand and up to that tricky placement with the left. Here we go. Kicks in, he's got the fig four. Works for Alexei Tomilov, for all those people that were asking if a fig four had worked. That's what a fig four looks like, and that is it in action. Look, he's got, ah, interesting. Do you see that? He had his pick in the very, very back of the hole, the tip of it, whereas some of the others have been on the edge hooking it. Interesting. Makes the clip. Okay, let's see where that puts him in the standings. About halfway in the table. It's crazy. First clip puts you halfway up. <laughs> Not usually how you want a semi-final to go. No. But the move's possible. Yep. More than eight people have got past the move. Yep. So it's just, it it's just tricky. Yeah, it's just tricky. But yeah, like you say, it'd be better to have people fall in, in lots of different positions. Well, I suppose they have as well. They've not all just fallen off one hole. It's just the three holes, that sequence. Right. All fallen somewhere within that couple of meters. Tomilov at the moment looking pretty composed. Drops in another fig four, this time left leg over right hand for that poor pebble. Look at it, there's just nothing on it at all. Jeepers. Kicks in hard. Makes the clip. He's a minute behind Tristan Ladevon. Here we go, adjusting on that hold. You are watching the men's lead semi-finals here in Sazfe. My name's Liam Lonsdale, and I'm here today with Kendra Stritch of the USA. And we're down to three climbers. Three climbers left. If you've missed any of the action, do not worry. The whole competition will be replayed on YouTube. You can watch that at any point at your convenience. And I would strongly encourage re-watching this men's semi-final. I know I'll be doing it. Despite seeing it firsthand, it was absolutely stunning route here brilliant setting and hopefully you're going to get to see alexi tomilov trying that move you see his breath there very cold in this car park parking lot for you kendra <laughs> um <laughs> the finals for the men and the women's league competition is later today the broadcast will begin and the climb will begin at 7 p.m local time that's 6 p.m greenwich mean time if you're not sure what that extrapolates to in your time zone, then you can find that by subscribing to the YouTube channel UIAA Mountains or like the UIAA on Facebook. And you will be able to 
or rather you'll be notified you'll be notified um, when we go live we're watching Alexei Tomalov from Russia working through this traverse coming up on the unique part of this route. So let's see how quickly he reads this move. So, Dengen, D -d 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 Dengen, I love that name, spent a lot of time here and you could see in his eyes that he wanted the dino, but he just didn't dino. He spent a long time well, he eventually he, did. He eventually did, and then he was really annoyed because he'd wound his time right now. That said, Alexi's brother Maxim did also waste a little bit of time, but a little bit, but not managed much. to work out the move pretty quickly. Let's see what Alexi does. What are you saying? Alexi's quite a bit behind on time. Way behind, a whole minute and forty-three behind uh, Nikolai Primorov. A, a good minute behind his brother Maxim. Big shout out to the fella who's in the cinema right now, watching this while his son's watching the new Paddington Bear film. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah, props to that guy. Now, let's see what Alexi Tomlov does. He's gonna reach up and make that clip. There he is, very smart. He's got exactly one minute on the clock. Come on, Alexi. Hesitant, kicks out wide with the right leg. Kicks in high with the left. Reaches. One, two, three. Oh no, oh! he stalls out and his foot was caught in the rope. Oh, oh and Lexi no. Tomilov. That's terrible. That is an absolute nightmare. That is not the way he saw that going. No. Dear me. That was unfortunate. Oh, Alexi. Didn't commit. Well, I think he committed too mm, soon. Yeah. Needed to work that out a bit more. Such a of shame. I think he was worried about time. Yeah. Fluffed it. Let me just write my note there. What am I going to write about on this one? Fluffed it. Fluffed. The so the question out. is, is he coming in in front of or behind uh, Dimitri? Dimitri. Grabenikov or... Who else was in that mm, spot? Grabenikov fell at the ice barrel. It okay. was... Um, Marshalov. Marshalov who fell there, yeah. But the question is, did... Oh, the clip. Ah, yeah, yeah, he got Mar the clip. He's ahead yep. of Marshalov. He is. Mm. Kendra Stritch and I just working it out as we go. Spectating. Speculating. Right, so, oh, a bit of chipping away at the barrel. Let's watch this, because actually what... Oh, no, I'm trying no. to think. He, did he, he didn't even touch it. He no. missed it completely. Well, Look at that got, left foot. Yeah, oh, he got stuck rope. on the rope. Said that, didn't I? Got himself in a right old tangle. Yeah. Oh. yeah. We're all amped up here in the commentary booth. Sixth place for Alexi Tomilov. Still enough for the finals, and Hyung Sub Lim is in the danger zone. Two more athletes to go. Dmitry Grabenikov's in the danger zone. Lucas Gertz and Mohamed Reza Safdarian are the last two to come out, and they're the ones that can knock Dmitry and Chong Sub out. I'm going to ask you to call it. I know it's impossible with it. Like, this is one of the rounds that you just cannot call it. No. Most rounds you can be like, mm, you know, I've seen Lucas, he climbs this style, he could do. Like, the people that you would not predict to fall have fallen. It popped off all over the place Pop on off. those. On the granite, yeah. little pebbles. Pebble popping. Yeah. yeah instead of pebble pinching. <laughs> no pebble pinching, it's pebble popping. Let's see how many peas we can get in. <laughs> Moving bit. quick here for <laughs> Lucas. Lucas Gertz, 18 years old, his sister Zena qualified for the finals in the women's competition earlier today. She's one of three Swiss ladies that made it through to the finals this evening. Finals begin at 7 p.m. local time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube and the Facebook page to be notified of when we go live. 
So far, no Swiss guy has qualified for the finals. Can Lucas Goetz make the difference? Wow. He is totally, co wow. <laughs> totally committed to that. I tell you what, with the noises that we've been making, you could, <laughs> you could make a right good video clip. <laughs> oh, dear. He's made it through it. He's made it through that bit. He's still got the pebble popper to go past. Going to crimp it? Yes, he is. Look at that. Go on, Lucas. You know, still watching Sam not be able to recover. I mean, he had it with his hand. So strong. Yeah, really good work for Lucas Gertz there. Makes the clip. Come on, big guns. Kicks in hard. Deep lock off the right hand to that next pebble. This is that final danger pebble. Once he moves off this, then it's kind of a little bit more plain sailing for a few moves. <sighs> Bated breath. He's gone for the front side hook on this one. Needs to watch his feet. Kicks it into that panel. Awesome work there from the 18-year-old Swiss. He just uh, caught up on some time there. Yeah, look at that. He's in second place all of a sudden. Just flew through that section. Yeah. Still not far enough to qualify for finals yet. Hyung Sub Lim was on that ice barrel. He is our current eighth place marker. If Lucas can make it onto the log, then he will be in qualifying position. Big kicks from Lucas there. Strong work, great core strength. Flicks into that fig four over the left hand. Into the fig nine over the right. Auf gets Lucas, come on. Little shake of the left hand as he flicks back into the four. Big move required. Just needs to get onto that log. He's got so much time. He can hang there for days. He just needs to hit it. Boom. Excellent. So that puts him ahead of Dmitry Grobanikov and Hyung Sub Lim. Sadly, the 19-year-old Korean is now out of the semifinals and out of the finals. Lucas Gertz climbs his way into the finals. And we have a Swiss finalist. We have four Swiss finalists. So good. Excellent. You can bet that the crowd will be going wild for Lucas Gertz later on. The Swiss women definitely get some bragging rights over the men this year. Oh, yeah. Every year. <laughs> the Swiss women have been bossing it for the past few years. What with Petra? Hitting really strong there. Come on, Lucas. Now, let's see what Lucas does with this move. Ale, Lucas, come on. Three minutes on the clock. Currently sitting in seventh place. Just needs to build that left foot up a little bit. Gets the clip swinging look. Excellent. Really good. He's climbing like a pro at the moment. Third fastest to this point. Look at all those Russian flags. Lucas is shorter than the last couple guys we've seen, so I don't think he's going to be able to do the spider move. Eyes up that hold. Oh, I love this camera angle. So good. Can he make that clip? Very smart move if he can. Just don't pop off the foot. Great clip. Lucas Gertz, he's climbing so well. The 18-year-old Swiss climber, very composed. Doesn't even need to stick this move, but hands I want free. him to. He's hands, hands free. free. Oh, and he, and he misses. just misses. Not quite enough commitment there. He doesn't know that he's qualified for finals, but he has. 18-year-old Swiss climber and his twin sister, Zina, will be Both through to the finals later on. Dude, take a breath. Relax, you're in. <laughs> Someone show him the results. <laughs> Awesome work. He's oh, like, that's shame, I man. had it. Why yeah, did I do yeah. that? Did he hit it? I couldn't really tell. It happened so fast. Let's watch on the replay. I, I think he did hit that left end of it, but he couldn't. He didn't get into the pocket. <laughs> People on, uh, on Facebook are saying their hands are sweating just watching this.
Look at that. Loved that move when he crimped that hold around the axe. So smart. Solid up to that right hand. He climbed so well through that lower section. Yeah, he was confident and, and quick. He really caught up on time through that traverse. Yeah, he did. It was really cool to see. Are you enjoying watching this? We've got one more athlete remaining. Oh, he did just tap it, but didn't quite hit it. Yeah. He didn't go over the right foot enough. He pushed off the left, but kind of stopped. His dead point was a little bit too far left. He needed to commit to that rock over. Yeah. Lucas, you're in. Yeah, I think he knows that now. <laughs> You can see Nikolai Primorov in the background there. And there he is. He's awesome happy. work. Lucas Gertz sits in joint fifth with Alexei Marshalov. Alexei Dengen in fourth. Tristan Ladovon tied with Nikolai Primorov in second. Maxim Tomalov in first. Dmitry Grabanikov sitting in the danger zone in eighth. Final climber today in this men's semi final will be Mohamed Reza Safdarian. Yesterday, Mohamed Reza had an awesome awesome qualifying round he finished first in the speed qualifiers and first in his group in the lead qualifiers speed didn't quite go to plan for him but he'll definitely be looking to put his energy into the lead today we've seen 17 athletes this morning this afternoon rather on this route a lot of those athletes are world-class top 10 athletes and this route has chopped them down it has absolutely destroyed them Mohamed Reza Safdarian has the potential to be in the final. No doubt about it. The question is, can he keep the composure and can he stay on the wall? What do you think, Kendra? He's fully capable, but <laughs> I mean, the way this final has gone, I'm, I'm not making you any bets. You can't call it. No. It's so hard. Ooh. I mean, just this... Yeah. I'm really glad everyone on the live stream audience is enjoying it. We're certainly enjoying it here. We have a question from a U on YouTube. Did anyone's pick ever fail during these competitions? Mm, like a broken pick. Yeah. I've never seen it. I've not seen broken picks. I've definitely seen bent picks. Seen broken hearts. <laughs> Plenty of broken hearts. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, Dreza. So. Ooh. Gosh, Korean style on the left side of that pebble. Switches to a hook on the opposite, stem side, just the opposite way around. I mean, technically that's the best way to do it because he's got the most surface area, but the hard part now is moving off that. Oh gosh, I can't watch. I know I'm being paid to, so I probably should. He's close, he's, there it is, come on. We adjust the feet, excellent. Gets below that hold. Center of gravity is in the right place now for Mohamed Reza Safdarian. Keeps very, very still on that hold. Barely any movement at all in the shaft. Makes the clip. And onto that final pebble of this very technical crux sequence. So far, looking really solid. Really nice work there from the Iranian. Moved consistently through that whole section. Only 25 years old. Finished 17th overall last year. He made finals here in Sazfei, finishing eighth. That was his best result of the season. Let's see what he makes of this next sequence. Just needs to move through that ice barrel quickly. He's moving pretty well. He's got four minutes and 19 seconds on the clock. 17 seconds behind Tristan Ladevant's fast time, 2.36. Crazy to think that the first few athletes were taking over two and a half minutes to do the first four clips. Tristan Ladevant was already at the ice barrel. Absolutely phenomenal. Flicks into the fig nine. Back into the four. These guys are all competing for places in tonight's lead final. It's the first of the season. Who's going to walk away with the gold medal in the men's and women's competition? 
You'll have to tune in to find out. We'll be live at 7 p.m. local time on YouTube and Facebook. You can like and subscribe to the UIAA YouTube and Facebook channels. You'll be notified when we go live. If you want to get in touch and join in on the conversation, you can use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing, or you can contact me directly using Instagram on at Liam Lonsdale. Mohamed Reza Safdarian now moving confidently up that log. Three minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. Needs to make that next clip, and then he needs to start springing. What methods are you going to go for, Kendra? He's, I think he's going to have to spring for it. He's on the shorter side, and um, he's not going to be able to reach all the way across. It's kind of deceiving, that wall. It looks like you could just stand on the box, but it does overhang into your face. So you can't go hands-free and stay hands-free. Nice little clip there. Smart. Really smart. He's now... Wow, look, he moved really quickly then. He's now in second place for the time, just behind Primorov, and he's qualified for finals. So that bumps out Dmitry Grabenikov. And so it's only Mohamed Reza Safdarian remaining, and he's guaranteed eighth place. Two minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. He needs to build that left foot higher. needs to keep building it. He does not know that he's already made finals. Look at that. Yes. Hands free. Awesome. Mohamed Reza, you absolute monster. Gets the crowd going and then sticks it like it's nothing. Look at him. He's just gunning now. What a legend. Love that. And the crowd love it too. He goes awesome hands work. free and then <laughs> motions to the crowd. What a hero. I'm glad it didn't backfire. So he's now in fourth position behind Le Tristan Ladovan and Nikolai Primorov. Doesn't even matter what happens now, but he does have chance to climb all the way into first place and go into finals with supreme confidence. Could be this be the round where Mohamed Azasafdarian takes his first ever medal. He pops, but he holds that ice barrel. Great stick there in the ice barrel. He's not going anywhere. Takes a second to recompose himself, catch his breath, calm himself down. He's got one minute and two seconds on the clock plenty of time to climb into second place at least kicks high into the barrel kicks down oh he's not getting a good placement with that left foot there we go hits it better this time stands into the volume and this is where we saw Maxim Tomanov bridging off that ice barrel again to get the torque excellent work from Safdarian come on Dreza Awesome work, using that left hand to readjust himself. He's not even on the placement there with that pick. Awesome work, make the clip. Super good, 15 seconds on the clock. Make both clips, come on. Come on, dude, come on. There's so much rope below him at this point that pulling that rope up to make the clip is oh a lot gosh. of work. Come on. Oh, it's no, he's timed out. Oh, no. What a nightmare. So close, but what a great effort. Climbs into second place. Mohamed Reza Safdarian from Iran. Brilliant work. And we will definitely be seeing him in the finals later today. While we wait for the replay, Kendra, you just quickly give me your summary of that semi-finals. Heartbreaking, exciting. <laughs> Man, that, I think that might be the most exciting semi-finals I've ever watched. I am inclined to agree. I'm going to read you my comments for each person. We've got super low fall, pop low, ice barrel, low pop, low fall, low fall, high point on route, and crazy coordination, fall off log. Awesome. Pop off. Popatron. <laughs> pop. <laughs> That's the double P-E. We've got all the pops in there. <laughs> oh, dear. So this was Dreza low on the route. Didn't look very composed at this point, but just totally found his flow. Really moved so well once he got into that upper wall and through that crux sequence. As Caitlin saying here, what a boss. Could not agree more. Mohamed Reza Safdarian bossed it. Thank you so much to everyone that has tuned in. Like I said earlier, we will be live later at 7 p.m. local time. That's 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time for the finals, the first final of the year here in Sazfe. 
2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. You can keep in touch with us using the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. You can like and subscribe to the YouTube channels. It's going to be a great evening. The atmosphere in here is going to be wild. There's going to be a few thousand people crammed in. There's going to be a massive party. Hometown athletes to cheer for. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, four hometown athletes. For me, that's got to be one of the highlights, is having four Swiss climbers in the women's competition. We've got Laura von Allman. We've got Zina Gertz. And, of course, world bouldering champion Petra Klingler. Look at that. What a move. So good. Oh, and he, like, flagged all the way around. Oh, that picture would be so good. Uh, um, did I say all of the athletes, all the girls? No, yeah. Yes, all the that women. That was all the Swiss women. And then, of course, um, Lucas Gertz qualified as well. What an awesome, awesome final. We'll finish this replay, and then we'll get a quick splash of those results. We'll be able to tell you who has qualified. <sighs> I'm going to go and have a nap. My adrenaline is so spiked right now. If I don't have a nap, then the finals are going to go really badly for me. Let's see. People saying on the, the stream that they're very proud of him. Here we go. So let's take a look at those results. There's your men's qualifying positions. Number eight, Alexei Tomilov. Joint six, Lucas Gertz and Alexei Marshalov. Fifth is Alexei Dengin. Third, Tristan Ladovon. Joint with Nikolai Primirov. Second, Teresa Safdarian. And in first, Maxim Tomilov. Russians, Swiss, Iranian, and French. Nice spread there in that men's final. There's the bottom nine. Unfortunate for Dmitry Gorbanikov and Hyung Sub Lim. Just bumped out. Andreas Gantner, low pop. Young Yon Lee, low pop. Samuel Clavien, Young Kye Kwon, Masud Zainali, and Nikolai Kuzovlev all suffering at the hands of that very technical and very difficult route setting here in the men's semi final. And there, of course, Kevin Huser and Paul Sam Pauli Salminen. Oh my gosh. Definitely need a nap. Pauli Salminen all suffering with that tricky setting. For me, I have to agree with Kendra. This was one of the best semi-finals I have ever watched, and I cannot wait to see what the team in Sazfe have got in store for us later this afternoon. We will see you at 7 p.m. Thank you so much for tuning in, wherever you are in the world. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm Liam Lonsdale, and I will see you later. Good afternoon.